This is a longer explainer video about the factors that can affect the permeability of the cell surface membrane. You might have done a practical investigating one of these factors using beetroot cells. Let's go through the possible factors that could come up on your A-level biology exam. So obviously the first factor that can affect the permeability is temperature. Now, I think this one is quite self-explanatory because we learn back in GCSE about how temperature affects, say, the rate of diffusion. And it's kind of similar here in that as we increase the temperature, we are going to increase the cell mem membrane permeability. Because what we already know is if we increase the temperature, there's more thermal energy available and therefore particles or molecules end up having more kinetic energy. So we can think about it in those terms. If we increase the temperature, we're going to increase the permeability because the membrane becomes more fluid. And this is because the phospholipids are gonna move more. There's a warmer temperature and they have more kinetic energy. They're gonna be moving from side to side or laterally more. And that means as they're moving, you're gonna get more gaps in that phospholipid bilayer and it is gonna make the membrane more fluid overall and that's gonna make the membrane more permeable. So increasing the temperature increases the permeability. The other thing to think about with temperature is the proteins because very high temperatures. So if you get an exam question and you can see the temperature has been increased to say 60 or even 70 degrees Celsius, very high temperatures denature membrane proteins. So you'll have learned about channel proteins and carrier proteins, even glycoproteins. These proteins can lose their tertiary structure, change shape and be denatured if the temperature gets very high. And again, that's going to ultimately increase the permeability of the cell membrane because these proteins are no longer able to control what enters and leaves the cell. You're going to end up with more gaps in that phospholipid bilayer. So that's the first one. Let's think about, for factor number two, let's think about pH. Quite often in the exam, they will put cells into acid. I've seen them um, put cells into hydrochloric acid. Now, obviously, acids have a very low pH, but any extreme of pH, whether it's very acidic or very alkaline, could have the same effect on the cell surface membrane. So again, pH, if we change the pH, so it's away from optimum or further away from neutral, we're gonna increase the permeability of the cell surface membrane. And this is because changing the pH is gonna denature membrane proteins which we've also discussed in relation to temperature. If we denature the channel, the carrier, any of the proteins embedded in that cell surface membrane, the membrane is going to become more permeable. And you can link that to your beetroot, tra uh, beetroot practical. If you investigated pH, you probably saw like if the solution was really acidic, more pigment leaked out of the beetroot cells because the membrane became more permeable due to denaturing of proteins. The other factor that we can think of is the actual solution itself that the cells and the cell surface membranes are in. So for example, you might see questions where cells are being kept in ethanol or cells are being kept in some kind of detergent. I've even seen um, students carrying out practicals where they're using washing up liquid and keeping the beetroot cells in, in a washing up liquid solution with some water. But if you're using ethanol or some kind of detergent, again, this is gonna increase the permeability of the cell membrane because ethanol and other detergents dissolve the phospholipids. So you're damaging that phospholipid bilayer. You're dissolving the phospholipids. It's going to be way more permeable. So in the beetroot prac example, again, more pigment could leak out. So 
We've considered temperature, pH, and any kind of detergent or perhaps ethanol as a solution. But the hardest one, and the one maybe we should focus on, which I'm going to label number four, is the proportion of saturated to unsaturated fatty acids. Now, let's just get our head around where we are with that one. Remember, the cell surface membrane is made out of phospholipids. Now, each phospholipid has two fatty acid tails. Those fatty acids can be either saturated or unsaturated. If they are saturated, there are no carbon-carbon double bonds. If they are unsaturated, then they do have carbon-carbon double bonds. It's why we call them unsaturated, because what we're saying here is these carbons are not saturated with hydrogen. If you were to break that double bond, they could each carry an extra hydrogen. So they are not saturated with hydrogen, which is why we call it unsaturated. Saturated are saturated with hydrogen. There are no carbon-carbon double bonds, so each carbon has its full allocation of hydrogen, if you like. Going back to the topic, though, the proportion of saturated to unsaturated does affect the permeability of the cell surface membrane. So let's see if we can explain why. If you have more unsaturated fatty acids, you're going to have a more permeable membrane. Okay, so more unsaturated compared to saturated will increase the permeability of the membrane. And that's because wherever you get these carbon-carbon double bonds, I'll just try and draw some. Wherever you get the carbon-carbon double bonds, you get like a kink in the fatty acid chain. And because you have a kink like that, let's draw another one here, another one with a kink. Because you get kinks wherever you get a carbon-carbon double bond, the phospholipids cannot pack as closely together because the fatty acid tail, wherever there's a carbon-carbon double bond, it kinks out. That means they cannot pack closely together, which means the phospholipids will be further apart. And if the phospholipids are further apart, like I've tried to draw here, then the membrane will be more permeable because there's more space between the phospholipids. Okay, I hope that's explained it. But what you really need to appreciate is the higher the proportion of unsaturated fatty acids, the more permeable and the more fluid the cell surface membrane will be. If you've just got saturated fatty acids, let's imagine that for a second, they're all saturated, no carbon-carbon double bonds. The fatty acid tails are straighter and therefore the fatty acids pack closely together, and that means that the membrane is less permeable and less fluid. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure to check out my latest videos on TikTok, Laura Does Biology, because we're doing lots of questions this week on membrane permeability and the factors that affect the permeability of the membrane.